Has the decisions you've ever made altered how you thought life would turn out? In our game, The Frostaken, No Hope for Tomorrow, players will guide the main character on a journey for forgiveness and peace. After choosing to preserve his own life over his son's, the guilt-ridden character is now haunted to the end of his days. This manifestation turns the hunter into the hunted. In Frostaken, players will control a character named Ruslan. He is an avid game hunter, but on his most recent hunt, the environment conditions became more severe than he has ever experienced. Being in the mountains, the winds are usually heavy, but a storm brought next level danger to the grounds. With no safe way to travel home, Ruslan and his son are forced to take refuge in their worn down cabin. After only days of attempting to adapt to the terrain, Ruslan notices that his son is unable to adapt and is becoming a hindrance. Unable to hunt for food and stay inside the cabin to prevent his son from freezing to death, Ruslan decides that it's his duty to grant his son mercy from this suffering. Even with this sacrifice, Ruslan's situation continues to worsen. Struggling against hunger, frostbite, and lack of sleep, Ruslan begins to grapple with his sanity and the guilt for selfishly saving himself. Becoming delirious, hallucinations, and delusions are normal occurrences. Once nightfall sets in, Ruslan's hallucinations become nearly real dangers. They take the form of creatures and even demonic heathens who lurk and hunt him. No matter how fast he runs or where he hides, these creatures always find and chase him. Whenever one finally catches him, Ruslan finds himself back in the cabin reluctant to repeat the day. As Ruslan is a hunter, players have access to basic survival skills, resource gathering, crafting, cooking, and sneaking. The game will feature a day slash night cycle allowing players to explore the area, gather materials, hunt wildlife, and prepare meals. Crafting is most essentially during nightfall as temperatures drop and can freeze Ruslan to death. Cooking is highly encouraged as hunger is a constant issue to the scarcity of wildlife. Ruslan hallucinates often refers to his diary where he had written his survival tips and recounts events in his life. After scattering the pages during a delusional meltdown, it is now the player's purpose to collect the missing pages. These pages offer hints to puzzles, upgrades in hunting and crafting abilities, and an in-depth look at Ruslan's relationship with his son. The player's goal is to complete the diary once again, however each page collected worsens the hallucinations Ruslan suffers from. The hallucinations become more prominent and the players must now sneak and hide to continue their journey. Players will have four difficulty options, easy, normal, hard, and no hope for tomorrow, the hardest difficulty. A mic setting is incorporated to interact with the environment within the game where heavy breathing from the player can trigger animals to run off or get the player noticed when they're trying to hide. In Frost Stake and No Hope for Tomorrow, we expect players to experience discovery, expression, sensation, and challenge. Our open world approach to our over-snowed mountain range gives players freedom to roam around the forest and up to the edge of the mountain while witnessing the habits of the wildlife. Expression will come through the eyes and life of Ruslan who is on the brink of insanity as he hunts, hides, and collects diary pages. Players will be guided to the sensations of pressure from being timed to complete tasks, panic from trying to keep Ruslan healthy enough to move through the environment, and being chased slash hunted by various creatures, discomfort and determination from having to restart from the central point. The cabin, after being caught or dying, an achievement slash accomplishment through completing puzzles and collecting upgrades that come with diary pages. Players will be challenged by puzzles that are spread throughout the game and environment exploration. Hunting will also prove to be difficult for players as movements, mic, and noises will interact in the game. An example such would be if the player breathed heavily or yawned while hunting animals, that animal would become startled and run away. As we gear to stay in bounds of relative reality, we also wanted to give our game that wow factor. In doing so, we chose to stay in the spectrum of psychological survival horror. We aim to put players in very realistic situations, yet give that extra push to get players to think that what they see could possibly happen. The psychological portion of the game are the hallucinations, being haunted by various manifestations of guilt and having the main character continuously question his sanity. The survival part of the game is a realistic need to stay alive while traversing the snowy forsaken land, the need for food, to stay warm, and to adapt as situations change. Horror in this game presents itself in the form of the story about Ruslan and the manifestations that haunt him throughout the game. Even though our game has horror in it, we intend for our stake to be played by teenagers. Any kind of weapon or tool usage would be limited to what the player can craft 
using available resources in the game. There will not be any extreme scenes of violence or gore, nor does the game possess any nudity. We have translated the death of the player to be presented as merely an end and rebirth to fit within the looping mechanic. There are also no graphic details about the death experience. There will simply be a flash of light and the re-entrance of the character back into the cabin from a top-down view. The game will, however, have infrequent use of strong language. This is mostly presented within the diary pages that are collected. The platforms that we had decided for the game will be PlayStation, Xbox Series X and S, PC for Steam and Epic, and Nintendo, we will also engage multiple VR platforms including PlayStation VR, Meta, Steam VR, and Vive Port. With having VR as a platform, players will get a more immersive feel of the environment and scares that occur. Full body tracking will also be compatible on these platforms. While using consoles such as PlayStation and Xbox, the graphics will be a major focus to give a movie-like experience, but Nintendo will have the graphics downgraded to give more focus on the motion gameplay. PC players will be given the option to change their display settings to get a more in-depth horror feel. The VR adaptations to their respective platforms will allow players to fully interact with the environment of the game. In conclusion, the Frost Take and No Hope for Tomorrow is intended to be completely immersive, regardless of the platform that is played on. Having an interactive mic feature and occasional jump scare will undoubtedly attract the teen audience we are aiming for. Staying as realistic as possible, there is no doubt that players will truly enjoy exploring the game and learning the story that we have put together for their entertainment. Mm -hmm.